So the other one's resume, mm -hmm. right? R E Z U M, is that right? That's right. And can you tell us a little bit about this and why this gets a lot of attention? <clears throat> and so I've had a bigger experience with Duralift, but I haven't had no experience with Resume. I did the first of these procedures in North America as part of this respective clinical trial. So I, I was involved early. I did 40 Resume procedures. I've done 400 Uralifts, and I essentially exclusively do Uralifts. And it's hard to balance different procedures in one practice. It's just, it can be hard logistically you know, and, and from a cost standpoint. So, so what Resume is, is that a very unique type of heat delivery to the prostate. So the two we mentioned earlier um, are what are called convective, uh, pardon me, conductive heating mechanisms. So the tuna and the microwave, essentially, if you can just imagine, imagine a fire underneath a pot of water and the, the metal pot, the farther away you get from the fire, it gets cooler and cooler, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just sort of a dissipation of heat. Whereas the water on the inside is heated uh, convectively and molecules kind of swirl through molecules and you get more of a uniform heating, which is why the whole pot boils uh, at the same time. So, so what Resume is, is the delivery of steam, water molecules, vapor into the prostate. And that works its way through the, the cells in a very different way that the previous heat delivery systems worked. So can Conductive heating didn't work. Convective heating seems better. This is really, really hot water. Yeah, it's really hot water. Right? We're talking, I saw a number like 100 plus Celsius or something mm -hmm. crazy mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. All right. So in the end, how long does that procedure take? And as good as anything else out there, similar as, I mean, how, how long does that procedure take to put a bunch of hot water in my prostate? It, it doesn't take long. And it can be done in a matter of five minutes, kind of like what we were talking about with your That's lift. good. Maybe even a little faster than your lift if it gets right down to it. The, um, the process though of delivering heat is a little more intense for a patient than the process of having the prostate pushed aside. So my experience with it was it was simply more painful. The other issue is heat, no matter how you deliver it, causes swelling of tissue. And swelling of tissue means that it's gonna be harder for a patient to urinate before it gets easier. So we routinely would place a catheter in a patient who has a resume procedure. Mm -hmm. And even once that catheter is removed, the heating has still caused enough swelling that the, the symptoms are gonna kind of linger, the, those sorts of things. And so when I compare resume to Urolift, and maybe I shouldn't do this just yet, I just think that the patient experience, what I described for the Urolift patient, is different than that for the resume patient. Doesn't mean it's not great therapy. I think it's way better than our previous heat therapies, right. but there's just some downsides. And as patients, if they were aware of the two options, you're gonna get a catheter with this one, you're probably not gonna get one with this one, your symptoms are gonna recover a little faster with your lift than they are with resume. In the end, I can't tell you yet <clears throat> which procedure is gonna to prove to be the best. We've got five-year data with your lift, we've got three-year data with resume. It's looking good, yeah. so I, th I think there's some value to it. So, but in terms, in terms of the time, it's all very short. Both of them are very short, right? It's all done in the office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's done in the office. And I wonder if it's possible to go back and do a second resume if the first one doesn't work. Absolutely, yeah. But I think, I think then we have to start looking at the tissue change. And yeah. I don't think that's been. That's what I'm wondering. I don't think that's really been done yet. I mean, I think. What happens is we're, we're killing cells, we're also affecting blood flow to that tissue. And then if we treat sort of ischemic tissue or denatured cells, where's the vapor gonna go? Is it gonna be a nice uniform process or are we gonna hit speed bumps or are we gonna be diverted into places we don't wanna be? Yeah. So I have that concern about retreatments. I also have that concern about post-radiation patients because that's not normal tissue anymore. Yeah. So, so delivering that kind of therapy in a, in a virgin environment is one thing, but in an environment, you know, again, where it, within the cells, the proteins have been denatured, the, the overall blood flow has been changed, there might be scars, you know, I, I'm nervous about it. 